today's video, we will be focusing on the testing procedure for a nerve conduction study of the ulnar nerve. My name is Quinn Millington. I am the owner and founder of EMG Solutions. You'll notice that we've got our patient laying on the table with her arm abducted almost to, it's not quite at 90 degrees, but it's pretty close. And we've got the elbow bent to about 90 degrees. The reason we do that is because we want to make sure that we remove any slack in the ulnar nerve as it comes across the elbow. So it does come through the, through the uh, arm, passes behind the elbow, and in her case, she's small enough that you can actually almost see the medial epicondyle, and the nerve comes right behind that epicondyle through the cubital tunnel, then into the forearm, it makes its way down the ulnar border of the forearm and into the hand, providing distribution to the muscles of the hand, including the hypothenar eminence, most of the intrinsics of the hand, except the ones that we mentioned in the video related to the median nerve. Uh, that you can reference in a different video. So our objective today is to walk through the setup and the testing procedures for this nerve. So in this case, I'm going to find the muscle belly and I'll, I will mark this and it, it almost seems counterintuitive, but we tend to get a little bit better result when, they, when, when we record not right in the middle part of the belly, but just in the proximal third of the, uh, of the muscle belly. And then I'm going to come back eight centimeters. That's what we use for our distal latency is eight centimeters. And then I palpate. So I've got my fingers down here and I can find the medial epicondyle. And as I palpate right here, I'll be able to appreciate the nerve as it comes out of the medial uh, epicondyle and just before it dives underneath the, uh, the flexor carpi ulnaris. And I'll just put it in a mark right there. I'm going to measure that distance. In her case, this is 18 centimeters. I'm going to make sure that I go around the elbow at least 10 centimeters. Now you'll notice, I'm going to see if we can maybe uh, see that with the camera, but I'm coming through the cubital tunnel and behind the medial epicondyle. It isn't quite 90 degrees. It's a little bit more like a check mark as it comes behind there. This one I'm going to mark at 10 centimeters and then we'll come up the arm just a little bit more for another 10 centimeters. So we've got an 18 centimeter segment, a 10 centimeter segment coming behind the elbow and another 10 centimeter segment coming up into the arm toward the axilla itself. So our, our marks are done. Um, now we're going to go ahead and put the electrodes on here. This one is going to be a proximal. That's going to end up becoming our reference electrode, our active electrode. The reference electrode I'm going to put up here on the proximal phalanx of D5. And our ground electrode will be placed on the back of the hand, right, at, right back here. So let's get the electrodes actually attached at this point. So here's our ground electrode. We got it attached now. And then we're going to go ahead and attach our recording, our active electrode right here. And then the reference electrode right there. So we've got, the, uh, I've got our patient set up. We're ready to start stimulating. I'm going to put just a dab of gel on our stimulating probe. And I like to point this out on every case. You'll see that we've got the cathode highlighted down here with the negative pole. We want that negative pole, that cathode, close to our active electrode. All right, so let's go ahead and stimulate right here at the uh, wrist and see what kind of response we can record. Okay, we got a nice response right there from the ADM. We took the stimulus up just a little bit more. We got maybe a tiny bit of an increase in the response, not much. And then we'll come down to the elbow. We're going to stimulate right here. And I'm going to check the amplitudes. Ooh, the amplitudes are identical. We're going to give it just a little more stimulation just to be, oh, we got just a touch more um, stimulation out of that. But our baseline also changed just a little bit. So I'm going to back it down just a touch. There we go, cleaner baseline. And again, our response is very consistent with what we had at the wrist. Now we're going to go above the elbow. Again, you'll notice that I've still got that cathode distal and closest to um, our active electrode. So we'll stimulate right there. 
we got just a little bit of motion out of this patient. We're gonna, I'm gonna take the stimulus intensity down just a little bit because I think she's just a little bit uncomfortable and we'll stimulate one more time. Okay, nothing changed. Still got a good solid baseline. All right, and then we'll stimulate once more, a little higher on the arm for this last segment. Okay, nice right there, nice segment. Now, in this case, you're gonna see me make a couple of adjustments on the, on the onset. On this one right here, I wanna move that onset over. That onset gets us a little more lined up with what I think is the true takeoff, and we're gonna do the same thing right there. We said earlier that this distance was 18 centimeters, so let's plug that number in, and there we go. We've got good data all the way up the arm now, uh, demonstrating a consistent nerve conduction velocity Amplitudes look really good. Latencies look really good. We would call this a normal study. Just to recap, this was a nerve conduction study procedure for the ulnar nerve. We trace that ulnar nerve as it comes through the arm behind the medial epicondyle through the cubital tunnel and then down the forearm and into the hand. We talked briefly about the, very briefly, about the muscles that are innervated. That could be a really long discussion in and of itself. We then identified a distal motor latency, eight centimeters proximal to our active electrode. And then we talked about identifying where to put a mark down here, distal to the elbow, proximal to the elbow, and then in the arm. We then stimulated at these three spots and recorded our data, which can be seen on the screen. Thank you for watching.